we'll see some benchmarks later on, uh, it's quite a bit quicker. Um, and quite possibly the most important part is that this is community built and driven. We're really, really looking to um, have input from the community, have people in the community, uh, com uh, whatever. If, if you find something that you wish were added to this or something that were easier or would be easier if you had a function to run it, bring it up, let us know. We'll show you in a second how to do that from uh, the GitHub where this is all hosted. Um, and we're really looking for as much or as many people working on this at the same time as possible. Um, all right, so you can find the library. The primary location is going to be the GitHub library. Um, and like I said before, feel free to make pull requests or pitch ideas or whatever. Um, I will post this, I guess, after this meeting in the Slack so that everyone has the, the GitHub for this as well as the demo, which we're going to be going over together in a second. Um, inside of this, you should be able to see um, the README, which the README will walk you through how to install it, um, kind of how to use it, make sure it's working, as well as a short description of each, each function that you'll see here. Um, at the very bottom, if you see under contributing, pull request or welcome for major changes, please open an issue. This is great. Just click a link uh, and you can type in what you, what you would like to see changed or what you wish were changed and then uh, maybe something that you wish were added. It's simple as that. You type it in and submit the new issue and someone who's working on it on the back end will pick it up and, and go from there. So we try to make it as simple and straightforward as possible. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Where's my slide? Go back here. All right, um, if we just do a quick uh, sneak peek at the multi-thread performance difference, the unpacked JSON for the single, these are all in seconds, by the way, and only run on 40K rows, but it can obviously go up from there. The only limit is gonna be your memory, uh, which Brian will also talk about later, um, possibly working on out of memory data sets in the future. That's something that's on our, our dashboard. Uh, okay, so you can see with the single single core, we're only getting, and this was all tested on uh, four core collab, just so everyone knows. So single core, we're at like 55 seconds for both the JSON merge and just the regular unpacked JSON. And then when we add the multi-core, uh, it drops all the way down to sub five seconds. So it's a crazy fast um, performance increase. Uh, special thanks before I get started to Ryan Squire for being the orchestrator and project architect, Brian Blakely for the brains behind the amazing multi-threading, and Ryan Cruz and Todd Hendricks for their con uh, contributions to the formatting and another, uh, a few other pieces to it. So, all right, um, we can jump into the demo, which it might be, it might not be a bad idea to just share this. Um, where are we? I'll try to put it in the chat here. If I knew how to do that, give me just a second. Chat, there we go. All right, so if you want to follow along, you're welcome to see it here. Um, we don't have it set up to where you can run everything without having to link it to your Google account, but I plan to do that sometime this week so that it's a little less problematic. All right, so in here, it's, um, it's basically set up to walk you through what each function does. We're not going to go through them one by one because that's quite a bit to do. Um, but you just do a normal pip install. It installs the library. Um, and then here you can, like any other library, name it whatever you want. The standard that we've tended to go with is SGPy for just safe graph pi. So anytime you see that, we're just calling the function from there. Um, and if you run the help function, this is kind of uh, interesting that it just gives you all of the active functions that are at your disposal. So you'll be able to see that you can unpack the JSONs, um, do the merges, do the arrays or whatever with a short definition as well as their arguments. Um, and if you see the, um, where is it? The money sign here, that is for pandas arguments and keyword arguments. So basically anything that you can run through pandas can be run through these. So if you're reading in um, a core folder or a core folder with a, a zipped core folder or any of those, you can use and pass through the same pandas functions that you would on anything else. They're just a little optimized. Um, all right, so let's get into it. Let's see. So with our first one, I said we were testing with 40,000 rows. So we'll just go ahead and read that in. There we go. And this is the original unpack demo for JSON. So we can run that. Uh, it takes about 50 seconds or so just to kind of see um, what it's doing. So it's essentially taking the JSON file and breaking it out and putting it into a new data frame. So in this, in this case, it defaults to CBG. 
um, but you can set it to anything you want. And it's going to take the CBG and put it into one column and then take the, the uh, I guess, keys, the keys for that and put it in the other one. Um, and so it's just, it should pop up here in a second, but we'll go ahead and look at the, we got to look like that, but uh, I wanted to look at the original content here. So you can set your JSON column, anything that is stored as a JSON, you can just write, you can put it down here um, with whichever column you want to break apart and then name your key and value columns, whatever you want them to be. And it'll pop out just like this. So um, there's nothing that has to be specified beyond the JSON column. These will actually be the key and the value will be auto generated, um, but you can also custom name them yourself if you would like. Uh, let's see if this is done yet. No, it's still got a little bit of time. We'll see. All right, there we go. So it took a minute and three seconds for 40,000 rows. So it took a little bit longer than the one before. Uh, now let's see the, uh, yeah, the fast one. So this is the multi-threading. Should be quite a bit quicker. Uh, this is the exact same data that's going to break down and give you. And it did it in four seconds, 4.5 seconds. So just crazy fast. And this is only on four cores. Um, this scales up. So if you're running with eight cores, or if you have a crazy 32 core thread rip or something like that, this thing should just fly through it. Yeah, um, to make a note, oh, sorry, Jack. Uh, I did test this on a system with 16 cores and then another system with eight cores, and it performs about as you'd expect. You see like a linear decrease um, in performance. So the runtime is slower as you get more, um, or is uh, shorter as you get uh, more cores. But uh, yeah, I was going to show a graph, but it didn't turn out that, it didn't look that nice. So we kind of just admitted it. Um, it didn't yeah, if you do run it, exponential, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, if you do run on a machine with more cores, you should be able to see a large difference in the um, performance. All right. Um, thank you for that, Brian. And uh, so, yeah, so we could go through and do each of these. The merge is pretty much the same thing. It takes uh, a little while to run. Um, but I was going to jump on down to the array. Where is that? All right. So the array, because it's so much less computation power, uh, we had to bump it up a little bit to get it to run, uh, well, to take more time to run. And we ended up running it at 2 million. I guess that's 2 million, right? Yeah. 2 million rows um, to get it up to about a 47 second runtime. Um, but uh, maybe I didn't run this one again. Well, we can try it. Let's see. We're going to bump this down, though. We don't want to do 2 million. It's a lot. Let's do, uh, let's do 400,000. OK. So we can run this and see what this comes down to. Um, While well, this is taking its time. Um, in this demo, you will also see here to the left, you can kind of navigate through. All right, so uh, on the left, you can kind of navigate through. And if you ever have a question about like how to, how do these functions work or how can you put them in, you can just go over here to the left and say, okay, so I need to read in a uh, geometry file. It's a zipped file. So I know that it needs to be the zipped one. So I just click on it and it takes you straight there and you'll be able to see uh, how to implement it. You can see what it defaults to by just putting it in because they, they all should run uh, with the default mode. And then you can go in and add custom stuff to it. So um, like right here, we're adding some custom panda stuff to it. We have our in rows and our columns that we want to use. All that stuff is fine to add in here, but it does have a default mode. So it shouldn't ever just error out on you. Um, all right. So let's go back out to the array. So that ran in 10 seconds. And let's see what this one runs in. Uh, hopefully faster than 10 seconds. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Speaking about that almost. Um, so you will see a performance uh, decrease if you have a small data frame when you're working in parallel, because the way that we uh, use multi-threading, we split up the data set and then we run smaller sections of the data set all at the same time. But there is a threshold or a drop-off where, you, you know, it's like too few uh, data points for it to actually, you know, make or further to be an, like an advantage splitting it up and running them at the same time. So you will see uh, if like uh, lower th uh, data sets, um, I think not that big of an increase or a decrease in this case. Yeah, this is, this was, although I think 400,000 <laughs> should be large enough for an yeah. improvement. I ran it earlier uh, and it came out as nine seconds. We'll have to, we'll look into this after Brian, oh, you and I can, yeah. um, figure this one out. But the good news is the original array runs pretty fast anyways. Uh, it wasn't quite as slow as some of the other JSONs. 
Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll jump into that and take a look later. So, all right, so if we continue down through here, um, we, we have a function for pretty much everything that is basic when it comes to reading in the data, just getting the data to where you can work with it and making sure that that data is, um, is actually useful and able to be read. So like if you check to these, um, where are they? Like the postal codes and things, they're being read in here as strings to make sure that if there is like this leading zero, zero six nine zero five, if that had been anything else, we would have gotten six nine zero five. Um, so it's, it's really important that these are read in correctly. Um, and so you don't have to, we're kind of taking the guesswork out of the users, which are you guys. You don't have to go figure out what exactly does every single data type need to be. You can just read these in and be confident knowing that it's going to come in correctly. Um, yeah, okay. And the, we have a few different ways to do the cores. For instance, there's a read in a core um, that does it as if you extracted the five files and just had them in a folder. And there's another one that does it just straight from the zipped file. We try to make it um, as, as malleable as possible, whatever you need for your, your personal uh, data flow or pipeline. Um, okay, and then if you have any suggestions here, you're welcome to put them up or talk to us or send an email to data stories at safegraph.com. Um, and if it is, uh, if that is it, then I will pass it on to Brian to talk about some of what the future of this is going to look like, some of the projects he's got going, um, and what uh, what we can look forward to with this. So Brian Blakely is a computer science and mathematics student at Bowling Green State University. He does applied data science and big data optimization research. Uh, and I will turn it over to you. And would you like me to set the screen to anything or give you control or what do you want? Uh, maybe just put it on like uh, the GitHub explaining okay. like just throw it over like unpack fast for scroll down a bit in the readme. Unpack uh, fast. Unpack JSON fast? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. It's all you. Work. All right. Thank you, Jack. So the a few things I want to touch on is if you're going to use the uh, fast functions, uh, as I expl explained before, it breaks down the data into smaller subsets and runs them at the same time. Um, and you can control how big those uh, partitions are or those subsets are by using the um, variable called chunk underscore n. So for example, chunk underscore n is always just going to default to a thousand because that's a decent number that we found out works. But that basically splits your data set into like X amount of partitions of size 1000. Um, and changing that will directly affect the performance because, for example, if you have less RAM having, you know, maybe 16, if you have 16 threads, 16 different um, versions of the data set pulled in at a time of size 1,000, it might be too much. So if you like reduce it to 500, uh, you'll have, uh, you can work with less RAM that way. Um, and then on the same note, if you increase it, like you should expect to see a little bit of a performance increase, but it gets kind of tricky because it's a little more, uh, it's a little more complicated than that. Um, and uh, yeah, for the future, we hope to do um, reading in parallel. So reading in CSVs quickly. So right now we read like, if we were to do um, like a core merge, we would read like part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, like all sequentially. So you just read them in and you'd waste a lot of time or you'd waste a lot more time than you could be. So we have a function that reads all the data in at the same time. So read in should take a lot less time for when you're going to, uh, to read in large amounts of data. So like if you're like reading a month's worth of uh, CSV data in at a time, you'd see a big difference. If it's just like a normal like week data set, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so you should be expecting that in a week or two. And then also I want to talk about um, the thread or the, uh, the libraries that we're using for this. So we're using multi-threading and uh, a library called Funk Tools. And these are just default basically in uh, uh, Python or at least in Collab. So you don't really have to go out of your way to install these. Um, but what I would have liked to use is a library called Dask or Ray, if you've heard of it. It's basically does the same thing that we're doing for uh, Pandas data frames the, to run them in parallel or to run them quickly. Um, and using those libraries, you'll expect to see a little bit of performance increase because they do a lot of work into like intelligently partitioning your data set 
into like the correct sizes for your machine specifically. And we don't really do that in our end because that's a lot of extra work. We just want this to be kind of simple. So if you were to like really want to use this on like, you know, like a cluster or something, I would look into those rather than just using uh, this simple tool. But if you're just using this to do like some simple analysis where you don't need to like read in like 30 million data points at a time, then you should be fine. Uh, and we're, yeah. if I can butt in here, we're also considering, uh, well, working on getting a demo set up to show how to implement either Ray or DAS. They're both kind of the same thing. One works better on Linux than the other, but they're pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Um, and so we're, we're hoping to see that in the future, uh, a demo just to demo how to use that with SafeGraph data. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have anything else to add. So okay. back to you, Jack. So um, let me stop my screen sharing here. Does anyone have questions? I think you guys just must have done such a great job. Um, you both mentioned that there are things that you're planning on doing next. Like what are the next two changes or additions you're planning on making to this? Okay, so uh, most of it has to do with optimization. Uh, we're trying to get it as fast and faster and faster and faster. And like Brian said, he's got some stuff that he's working on with the, uh, the multiple file, yeah, multiple file read-ins at the same time. So that's a little quicker in that sense, but um, and my, my personal agenda is trying to get as many people interested in using this as possible. We'd like, we, we made it, we'd love people to start using it and uh, tell us what's wrong, tell us what works, tell us what doesn't work. Just, you know, let's get yeah. some feedback. And, and also these functions definitely have room for optimization. So uh, if you're really interested or have a lot of experience, you can just take a look. And uh, if you want to contribute, yeah, just let us know. and We can work on implementing su any suggestions or optimizations that you might have. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, last chance, anybody, any questions, and then we'll wrap it up. And if you think of one after, just send us a, a message on Slack. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Brian, Jack, thank you so much. Thanks for all your work into this. No problem. Take care. Talk to everybody soon. Bye.